Hi, I'm Terry Murphy, the founder of the Women's Wisdom Network and the senior editor for Realty Times Women in Business and Women in Real Estate. And today we've got a mega, mega celebrity. She is the incoming president, WCR Women's Council of Realtors. Let me correct that. We're not supposed to use that anymore. Women's Council of Realtors president 2021. Her name is Pamela Banks. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you, Terry. It's great to be with you today. Well, you know, it takes a tremendous uh, focus and intensity and passion to be a woman in business, a woman in real estate, and then to lead women. Now, how many Women's Council of Realtor members do we have the, today? We have over 10,000 nationwide, and then we have some affiliate partnerships throughout the world. And that is really, that's a lot on your plate besides being married to your high school sweetheart for 40 years and being a mom and being a grandma of three granddaughters. How sweet is that? Um, so I know that you've had a passion for real estate forever. Um, I know that you uh, understand excellence because that's how you got to where you are. But specifically, uh, RIS Media has asked us to find and identify women in leadership. And of course, uh, you have to be one of the top three women. And I know that, um, that there are challenges that come with leadership and being a woman. Now there's challenges in leadership, let's be fair. Uh, there's the connection, there's uh, the diversity, there's uh, generational dynamics. There's so many different entities that affect leadership. But what do you think is your, your challenges for women in leadership today? Well, let's begin by saying leadership is a, it's not really a title, it's, it's not a position, it's a state of who you are. And anyone can be a leader and, and most people don't believe it or not, they are leaders. And so as an organization that looks at other women and men, 10% of our members are men who want to empower themselves to be better as well. We look at the whole person. And I think that's what sets the Women's Council of Realtors apart. We grow leaders. We choose not to be a group that is an advocate, women's advocacy, yet we are a group that focuses on giving our members the resources and tools to be the best that they can be. And the challenges we have as, as women is not believing in our worth. I don't think we, I think we take ourselves for granted. We are the first ones who look at all the negative about us instead of focusing on the positive. And so over the years as a leader, I've learned so much about myself and about others and how to get along with others. Let's face it, not everybody is going to like you and you're not gonna like anyone, everyone as well. The fact is you have to get the job done. So you have to rise above those challenges and focus on the plan, come up with a solution and move forward. That's what it's all about when you are a leader. Well, I did about 234 interviews for women in business. And I can tell you, it is universal about self-value. And I think that part of that is, depending on your age and the impact at the time, what was considered beautiful at the time, uh, it has all changed. And I think the spotlight, especially as a challenge, is, as a Women's Council of Realtors president, is to shine that spotlight on the uniqueness of each and every one of the members, because everybody brings this brilliant piece to the puzzle. And I know that you already know that. What's your challenge in, uh, in the whole leadership piece as it comes to changing things? How do you find people change or don't change, especially when you have a bunch of women uh, all, uh, all having great and strong and passionate opinions? Well, change is inevitable, let's face it. We all have to deal with change and, and some of us don't like it. I'm not one that really likes change. You know, when they come up with a, a new iPhone or a new piece of technology, I'm the one going, ah, you know, this is working just fine. So I get it. And the fact is, is we have to change to stay relevant. So what we've done over the last five years is we have totally reorganized the internal structure of our organization so that it's more relevant, so that it's not so much focused on the operation day to day, but more focused on streamlining, on consistently, on consistency and building a brand that is recognizable. You know, these are the things that we need to do for ourselves as well, as I think we take that for granted, that we think, well, we're just like everybody else, but you're not. We all bring, like you said, something different to the table and celebrating that diversity is so important. And that's what my job is as a leader with the Women's Council is bringing out what's in you, what makes you tick, what are your dreams? Are they big enough? 
Most of the time they're not. So we're gonna make some big dreams come true in the year ahead. I'm gonna challenge our members and they're gonna hopefully challenge me. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Those are the challenges that we have is we just have to believe in ourselves. We've got to take the step of faith and we've got to think big and go big. So your strategies were to change the relevancy of how women's council relates to the membership. Can you give me one example uh, of that that you've, comes to mind? Is there Was there a favorite? You or know, I have to say that we have built a bridge and we've added some new leadership positions so that there's there's a touch in every level of our organization so that somebody always has someone they can reach, a real person that they can reach out to when they have a question, when they need some support, when they're unsure of what to do. And I think that's super valuable moving forward is we all have to realize that we need each other and we have made an organization that has those different layers that help you along your way that you don't feel like you're left out in the, in the dark. You know, as I came up in leadership, there were times where I was given a job to do and that's it. They just dropped it in my, my lap and then said, here you go, girl. And, and how, that doesn't work. So we wanna make sure that we prepare our leaders for success. Well, that's so that was one of your strategies, which I quite frankly think is brilliant because you're right. So, uh, and especially if you're that kind of go-to person, that resource person, they go, oh yeah, Pamela, she can do it. And, yeah. and they do drop it in your lap, but that doesn't give you a sense of authorship with other people's opinions and, and collect what we call collective intellect. Because when we expose it to other people, we get to see perspectives from a time that we were not invited to. So it's great to have a 20 year old and a 30 year old and a 40 year old mm -hmm. in the mix so that it brings us a, something we may not have seen, which a, 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 to speak to what you just said, has a broader appeal. So good for you, that's a great strategy. And it, did you notice it always uh, centers around communication? Oh my goodness, communication is key to successful relationships in everything from your personal relationships to your business relationships with your customers. It's the same thing. And that's what is going to be key next year is our communications. We're gonna make sure that we're reaching out and letting people know that we're here. We're here for them. We wanna help them. What can we do to help you? That's what it's all about. It's not and, about us. And you're more approachable, I would say, because there's more actual people involved and less corporate layering, which I think is what you just brought up as a strategy. So way back in the day from the Women's Council of Realtors, their communication was a, a, a kind of a newsletter called the Communique. Were, do you, were you were involved? We have, no, no, we, I, I was not. We have what's called the eConnect and that's right. what we feature. We feature electronically some of our, our members that are doing outstanding things, not only in the industry, but also in their communities because they serve as role models. You know, you may be thinking, I'd like to get involved in the city council. Well, here's someone who's actually serving on the city council, or I wanna get involved as a, a local board president. Well, here's someone that's serving and, and look what they're doing. So I think we like to hear other people's story and then relate that to our own lives. And that's what we do with our communication. And that's the very bottom line for Women's Wisdom Network, women helping women, showing us possibilities. So that leads us to life balance. And you, you, were, you lit up like a little tree when you talked about your high school sweetheart uh, and your family. And I think at this point of our lives, especially when we've had legacy, I mean, you've been in real estate since 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, you've obviously helped you've 20 years of experience, plus you're involved with uh, RPEC and some other, the Florida Association of Realtors. The one thing I noticed in all of our interviews uh, is the most powerful women, and I'm using powerful from the, from the fact that they're in a C-suite. So it is because everybody's powerful in their own uh, right. But was there a fierceness with boundaries for, personal, uh, for their personal life? Because as you know, the women's high adaptability factor allows for them to be highly flexible, which in some cases is combined with an altruistic motivator in their personality and their, and their behavior. And which means that everybody gets a cookie and they get the crumbs. So how, tell us some, some ways or some thought processes or principles, core values that you live by that allows for you to enjoy your life with all of this extra responsibility on your plate. Well, first of all, there's no such thing in my world as balance. 
I believe that balance comes in many different ways and that sometimes you're going to be more balanced. You're going to be more involved with your business because things are happening that you've got to do in your business. And sometimes you're going to be more involved in your volunteer work because you're responsible. If you say you're going to do something, you need to get it done. And sometimes you're going to be more involved with your family. Maybe you need to go on a vacation to spend time with your family. So I believe that in the end, it all balances out. But to try to balance it out every day, every week, you know, that's the pressure I take off myself. I, I allow myself to realize that there are going to be times when I'm going to be focused a little bit more on business, a little bit more on volunteering, and maybe even myself, believe it or not. I was just going to ask that. <laughs> I was just going to ask because the one, the one woman we all like to hate is the one who walks into the room and she graces in and she, her nails are perfect and she has the right handbag. And she doesn't look like she's missed 200 meals and stuffed some old pretzels in her mouth. I, I mean, we just, that woman, you know, that woman. And we're like, oh, because we don't give ourselves that grace and that space to breathe. And so I wondered is, what do you do when you know you're there? Do you just disengage for a minute? Do you, if it's not too personal, do you just have a cup of tea by yourself? Do you take your husband on a date? What do you do just to regroup? Well, I'm addicted to orchids. I have 75 orchids in my yard. And when I'm not doing business, I'm not volunteering, I'm not with my family, I'm out there looking to find a little bit of growth here, maybe a dead leaf here, something that's going on. And it, what's really funny, Terry, is so during the uh, social distances and staying home orders and all that, my orchids, I think, really got tired of me because I, I was spending too much time with them. In fact, I actually killed one for giving it too much love. So when I'm not doing that is my little um, my little safety zone is just to go in my orchid garden. I've got a couple of really great wind chimes. I just bought one recently that is in the tune of A. And I just go out there and I listen to that. And it just it's it just makes me centered. It just puts me back in perspective that sometimes I take myself a little too serious. You need to laugh. And that's the one thing when you talked about my high school sweetheart, my husband of 40 years, he makes me laugh, you know, and we need to laugh. We need to laugh at ourselves because life is too short to go around just worrying about all the other things in life that happen. You know, you've got to have fun. Oh, yes, we do. And if a Good that you have a husband that makes you laugh and not want to tase him. So good for you because a lot of people with, with the sequestering are like, love him for life, but not for lunch. Well, you know, RIS Media is one of the leaders in communication in the real estate industry. And I'm honored to, to write for them and to showcase people like yourself. So communication is still the number one key for you as a leader to let people shine where you plant them, to use your orchid analogy. The strategies are to empower them to be that resource so they can shine there. Uh, and then your life balance requires you to be flexible so that you aren't frustrated when you can't get that one hour in you promised yourself. But it sounds to me like you do still bank it and then give yourself that place, your happy place, which for you is your family and your orchids, which I can share. I understand that. And I want to thank you for joining us. Pamela, what's the best way to reach you for somebody who wants to maybe have an interview or to, to uh, get your, cons your consultation on being a leader for women in business? Well, my cell phone is attached. And of course, I have one of these devices on me. Ah, so that's 561-346-1661. Okay. Uh, or of course, uh, email is Pamela Banks Realtor at gmail.com. And of course, we can always find you on LinkedIn. And we are thrilled yes. to have you join us on the Women's Wisdom Network Facebook community group, where we share these insights from women who might be listening to this and say, well, I don't know how she does it. She probably doesn't have this, 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 and this. And then you learn the real truth behind it, the transparency behind a, a strong woman in business, and especially as a leader in real estate. And I congratulate the Women's Council of Realtors for being so brilliant to make you their leader in 2021. We, we will be here to support you and hope you'll join us again for another Spotlight on Women in Leadership. Thank you, Terry.